Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I'm the person behind Happy Puppy Truffles. Today I wanted to share with you guys the new uh, um, origami magazine that just came out a little while ago. And um, just as a reminder, I'm kind of doing these a little differently this year. I'm just instead of showing you guys the actual entire inside of it, I'm just sharing with you guys the a couple of the pieces that I folded from it. This is issue 512, which is for April. Um, now we're already pretty much almost to the halfway point of April, but the, one of the first parts of April that was kind of important was uh, Halloween. Uh, hello, hello, Halloween. Goodness, yeah, my brain's working today. Easter. But that was kind of, kind of taken care of in the previous issue. So this one is now just about a new school year and flowers, lots of flowers. So some really cute projects in here. Let me kind of show you guys some of the ones that I that I thought were really cool. Um, one of them, there, I did do a few flower ones. So the first flower that was in here is this adorable tulip flower. And it's just so cute. It has a little bit of dimension to it. It does stand up with this little leg here. Um, this origami was fun to fold. It's um, a tulip by Kazue Asai. And I thought it was just a really kind of a fun origami. You know, there's some origami that's just like fun to fold. This was really fun to fold. And the result is really cute. I used a uh, thicker paper. So maybe some parts here were a little harder because of that. If you use regular origami paper, you won't have any trouble with it. Uh, there is one tricky move where you have to do this sort of indentation of things at the top there. That can be hard if you're new to origami, so you want to kind of keep that in mind. But otherwise, pretty fun and really pretty cute little project that you get from that. The uh, connection between the tulip and the stem is precarious, so it does fall apart pretty easily if you bump into it. So if you don't want that to be a problem, you do need a little bit of glue to kind of make things stick together. I haven't glued mine yet, but... If I, you know, shake it around a bit, it will fall off, but not that much right now. There you go. See there, Philip. So it kind of gives you an idea of what it's like, but very, very, very cute and fun project. I would definitely recommend it to you guys. So um, that one was one of them. And then like, so there's a lot of flowers in this issue that one of them that I saw on the cover is this beautiful <laughs> Sakura flower. And I made a huge one because <laughs> I was really nervous about if I could successfully fold all the parts because it's pretty complicated little flower. And you do need to actually start off with a piece of paper that is a pentagon shape. They show you in the magazine how to cut from a square to a pentagon to make sure you have a perfect pentagon. And then you do the folding. Now, this particular origami was hard and not fun, <laughs> I would say. It, it was okay, and I knew what I was kind of getting to, and I knew it was going to be cool. But um, I wanted it to be a little bit more fun, but it wasn't, it wasn't terrible, but it is hard, so... It's a cherry blossom by Tomoko Tanaka. And I would say, you know, anytime you try to make any kind of a flower that has five parts, you know, petals to it, it's going to be challenging. Um, generally in flowers, when you're not doing modular, you're work looking at something that's going to be a little complicated. So, but if you do really want to learn how to use this and you do have the magazine, I'd highly recommend using larger paper and then getting a chance to practice it until you move down to the smaller size. If you have the dream of making little tiny petaled little flowers like are the real size of Sakura, you will be in for a big treat because that's a hard project to do. So I used really big paper, probably 50 by 50 centimeter, I think. I'm, I might be wrong on that, but that's it was big. So <laughs> kind of give you an idea, but fun, kind of, a little challenging. Um, and then this other one that was kind of cute is sort of this little flower and it's called like a flower cap by um, Ayoko Kawate. And it comes in this cute little like stand. And then there's this flower that goes in here. And if you want, you can make the same flower then again in duplicate to put inside. Uh, but you make it uh, a quarter of the size of this. And um, I realized halfway into it, I had started with paper that was a little too thick and it was gonna to prove to be a little more difficult than I wanted it to be, so I stopped. But it's a cute, cute little fo flower fold. And um, I had some fun folding it. I thought it was kind of neat to put it all together. So, you know, I would probably recommend to you guys, it's, it's a fun project. So this is just a traditional origami box. Um, and you know, this is, this is kind of, this is a quarter size. If you wanted, you could probably make it a little bit smaller and then it'd be a little snugger fit there, but you could do such pretty things with different colors and stuff to make this flower really pretty. So definitely a cute little fun project you can kind of see 
deep down inside there. Uh, but this also has that trick that the tulip did with needing to invert a bunch of everything. And I know that can be a really difficult step for people if you're not used to doing origami. I don't like doing it. It's annoying. <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> um, it, if you have good pre-creases, it sometimes can kind of naturally fall together once you get started. But it can. it is a really one of my least favorite folding techniques. So, but very, very pretty results. So, um, and then uh, we kind of got into a couple of other items that are good for back to school. Of course, you're thinking school, you need to reorganize your desk. So this is a cute little tray that you can use to put stuff in. This was harder than it should have been. <laughs> I don't know why. This is uh, also by um, Ayoko Kawate. And um, I, I don't know why I had such a hard time with it. Um, I think partially because my paper, I started out with some tomp paper because I really wanted to have nice rich colors, but, um, but the folding isn't really very crisp. And so it kind of made it sort of bleh, like it looks mushy to me, but, <laughs> and then the way it pieces together is not natural and tight at all. You do really need to have glue and that, that can be frustrating. To, I think when anyone's trying to put something together, if you're really looking forward to making it without glue, that it won't work. You do need glue to keep it all together. Um, but it creates this really nice, cute little tray with a nice big cross section here for you to put stuff in and then little places for you to put things too. So it's, it's a cute project for sure. But you do need five sheets of paper and a lot of patience. So pretty fun. And then the last thing that was in here is a a heart by um, Francis M. Y. Ao, and he does awesome stuff always with heart shapes, really fun things. And it was cute to see his work featured. Sometimes they do feature people. Um, I don't know if they actually make requests out to the magazines or if they know to feature certain people. There's been people over the years that have been featured. He's been in magazine in this magazine before. Um, but it's this adorable little heart shape, but with a book on the front that you can actually have pages to write a message on. It's so cute. Oh, just adorable. And this is like most of his stuff. It's, it's uh, a little challenging, but not impossible. And I think that the, um, you know, instructions sometimes almost make it feel more difficult than it is because once you finally start kind of getting into it, it's like, Oh yeah, no, that's, that's the way it's supposed to go. Okay, cool. Um, very cool. His designs are always very clean and, and nice in the end. I love how everything always comes together with his stuff. So I would definitely recommend it. It's a very cute design and a little book with a heart. And I mean, perfect for anyone who loves to read, perfect for anything. Anytime you want to use just a heart and include a message, so many different times you could use it. So I would highly recommend. This whole F issue was fun. So if you know you're going to be visiting here in Japan and you don't think you're going to get a chance, obviously, uh, you know, to maybe uh, see all the issues, you can, of course, like I said, subscribe. They offer international ship and shipping for their subscriptions. But if you just want to go to the library, see what's current, they have all the back issues for years and years and years. And then current issues are available as soon as the month runs out then you can also get your hands on things. So like the very first most recent issue right now is only available as a resource item that you can't take with you out of the library. But then later on it becomes available. So it's pretty cool. Definitely something to check out if you're here uh, or bookstores have them too. So uh, it's a great magazine for sure. One of my favorites. So, and that was this month's uh, stuff. So just a, you know, a few, not necessarily everything that's in here, but some fun kind of cute projects for you guys to look forward to if you're interested. So. I will have some more fun things to share with you guys in the days to come. Looks for that. And I will see you guys all next time. Bye.